Dalangin namin na sa mga kinakailangan makilala sa inyo kay Kristo bilang kanilang tagapagligtas. Hinihiling namin na ngayon ang maging araw na kanilang makilala kayo at isuko ang kanilang buong buhay. Hinihiling din namin, Panginoon, na kayo o Diyos ang siyang magkakaunawa sa amin patuloy ng tunay na kondisyon ng puso ng sangkatawahan. Nang sa gayong Panginoon ay alam din namin kung paano ho sila bahagian ng Ebanghelyo ni Kristo Yesus. Salamat Lord sa lahat ng gagawin ninyo. Nawa Panginoon, ito ay para lamang sa pagbibigay ng kaluwalhatian kay Kristo Yesus na kung saan sa kanyang pangalan ito ang aming panalangin. Amen. So tayo ho ay nagpapatuloy sa pag-aaral ng tinatawag ko nating penetrating analysis of sin. Mula kay Apostol Pablo na siyang atin hong pag-aaralan mula hanggang uh, mula Romans 1.18 na siyang natalakay na natin ng mga nakaraang mga linggo hanggang sa Romans 3.20. So yan ho ang mga passages or section ng Romans na kung saan si Pablo ay nagdadaisek at nag-analyze ng kasalanan ng sandibutan. Kanyang ipinapakita na gaano man kabuti ang tao sa panlabas na anyo, ano, ha? kailangan pa rin niya ng ibang helyo. Sapagkat kahit na yung outward behavior seems to be okay in the eyes of men or society, pero yung loob, yung puso ng tao sa mata ng Diyos ay bulok, masura. You know, ang nakalulungkot na kondisyon ng puso ng bawat tao. Pero tayo ay lubos na nagpapasalamat sa Diyos sapagkat ang Ibanghelyo ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos para sa kaligtasan ng sino mang sasampalataya sa Kanya. Kaya ho, ang solusyon ng Diyos para ho sa devastating effects ng kasalanan ay ang Ibanghelyo. Wala na hong iba. Ang pagkamatay ni Kristo para sa ating mga kasalanan. At ang kanyang muling pagkabuhay mula sa mga patay. Sa kanyang pagbibigay sa atin o pag impute ng righteousness sa lahat ng sumampalataya sa kanya. Kaya ho, we can see, as we have studied in the past uh, meetings, na ang problema ng tao ay hindi ho lack of information. Marami hong nagtuturo na siguro ang kulang lang sa mga tao ay malaman nila ang tungkol sa Diyos o ang tungkol sa Biblia. Hindi ho natin binamaliit yung kahalagahan ng education or educating people regarding theology, the study of God. Pero we can see here in the message of Paul na ang pinaka-root ng, proble- ng problema ng sangkatauhan is not a lack of information because the heavens proclaim the continuous, never-ending message about God's existence at yung aspeto ng kanyang kalikasan. Yan ho kaya ating binasa nga ho ng mga nakarang linggo sa Salmo 19 verses 1 to 6. Because ang problema ay rebellion. Rebellion is the problem of the human race. Yung mga hindi humana lang palataya ay patuloy nilang sinusuppress yung karunungan ng Diyos. At ang ginawa ho nila ay binaligtad ho nila ang sitwasyon, ang kanilang sinamba, imbis na ang Diyos ay ang mga nilikha ng Panginoon. Sa iba't ibang uri, ng kaparaanan, in different manifestations, in different shapes and forms. Kaya ho, if a person is not a believer, wala hong tinatawag na neutral orientation when it comes to an understanding of God and the worldview. It is either 
you are worshiping God or you are worshiping other things other than God. It is either your life is submitted to God or your life is submitted to another God. There is no such thing as neutral towards life and God. No middle ground. Kaya ho, it is either you are for God or against God. You are either in agreement with God or you are biased against God. And so we can see here in the next slide, we can find now the warning signs of the impending death of a society. Alam mo natin na ang mga tao ho ay they come and go and I'm talking about uh, physical death. Merong ipapanganak sa araw na ito. I'm sure na sa araw na ito, pe, pe, ano ba ngayon, 26, ano? may mga taong pinanganak. And I'm also sure na sa araw na ito, may mga namatay o may mga mamamatay. So, but we are not talking here about the physical death of a society. We are talking about spiritual death. And we are even talking about every day there are countless of people who will die a death of death because as they die today, if they are not in Christ, they will suffer for all eternity. But today, we can see the impending death of a society. Sa Romans chapter 1 ho, dito ho ay pinapakita yung final outcome of any society that rejects the knowledge of God. Did I describe ho rito yung slippery rope of any society that has turned its back on God? And this is a clear acceleration of moral decline. So, hindi ho pataas yung morality ng society o ng mundo. Kabalik na ho, siya ho ay pabaksa. On a consistent basis. And so, in our first point, in our outline, in the next uh, slide, we can see society's rejection of God. Romans 1.28, yung first part. Sabi niyan, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God. So, sino ho yung salitang, yung mga sinasabi niya na they? Sino ho yung sila? Ito ho yung mga God rejectors. Ito ho yung mga God refusers na atin hong pinag-aaralan simula pa doon sa verse 18 hanggang sa pangkasalukuyan. Ano ho ang gagawin ng Diyos sa mga tumatangi sa Kanya. Deliberately rejecting Him. Well, God rejects and abandons them. Sabi ng Hebrews 10, 31 and 32, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Kaya kung i-trace natin ito hong uh, ref- reference ng salitang day, we can uh, go back even to verse 22. Sabi niyan, they became fools. Ito ho yung uh, pretending to be wise. They became fools. Sabi rin ho ng uh, verse 21, even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks. They became futile in their foolish speculations. So, verse 21 ho yan. And then, when you move back to verse 20, sabi niyan, they are without excuse. And then, move further, verse 19, that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. In verse 18, we finally look here at what Paul says yung pinaka-antecedent niya, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So yung word na, na day, we can see here consistently, inuulit-ulit 
para i-stress mo dito na ito ho yung mga ungodly, unrighteous men na sila ay kanilang sinusuppress ang katotohanan because they wanted darkness rather than light. So, yung they dito sa verse 28 very clearly are the God rejectors na siyang consistently paulit-ulit na binabanggit sa verses 18 hanggang 27. Sila ho yung mga wala kay Kristo na sa labas ng kanyang kaharian na bubuhay ng, may, ng mayroong ungodly attitudes and unrighteous lifestyles. Now, in the next slide, we can see here this time as we are continually dissecting yung mga verses na ito, a re-emphasized truth. Okay, beginning at verse 28. And I emphasize on the Paul dito, yung initial sin of rejecting God. Kaya, inuulit-ulit niya ho yan sa 19, 21, 23, 25. So, binigyan ho sila ng knowledge, ano, ng kaalaman tungkol sa Diyos. Beginning with the creation. Ano ho ang kanilang response? Ang kanilang tugon ho ay rejection. Revelation of the truth ng kanyang existence and character through general revelation. We saw that in verse 20, Romans 1. Ang kanilang response, deliberately rejecting him through faith, through unbelief, brother. At ano ho ang consequence because of the rejection? Divine judgment. So sinasabi ho ni Paul sa verse 28, they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer. Kaya nire-emphasize so ni Paul yung initial sin of rejecting God na kanyang describe in the earlier section concerning men who suppress the truth. Verse 19. Kaya pinili ho yun eh. No? Yung katotohanan ng kanunungan o knowledge ng Diyos ay pinaalam na reveal sa tao Ngunit, pinili ng tao na isuppress. Imbis na tanggapin with open arms and worship the Lord, hindi ko nila ginawa yun. Kaya, ang Diyos ko rito ay, sabi ng Biblia, because He is a holy God, yung kanyang puot, yung kanyang rat, ay kanyang inilabas. Binuhos sa lahat ng mga ungodly and unrighteous. Even though they knew God, sabi ng Bible, they did not honor Him as God. So we can see here, brethren, na naalala ko tuloy yung, yung encounter ni Christ doon sa uh, rich young ruler. If you remember that uh, uh, short account na kung saan there was this rich young ruler na one time lumapit kay Christ at sinabi niya, Lord, how can I have eternal life? So he was very uh, curious and interested na magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggang. So ang Panginoon naman ay uh, sinabi sa kanya, actually finesse lang siya, sabi sa kanya, alam mo naman yung commandments. You know the commandments. So sabi ko ng rich young ruler, well, wala ko ng aking pagkabata. Nagawa ko na yung mga yun. So, pinagmamalaki niya na nagawa niya, na, na niya yung mga commandments na yon ano ba ba ang pwede kong gawin, sinasabi niya, para magkaroon ako ng buhay na walang hanggan. But in reality, he has not really obeyed the commandment dahil hindi ko niya alam that even though if we obey all the commandments but break just one of them, you have broken totally the whole law. Sabi ng James chapter 2 verse 10. Kaya, Ang sabi ni Christ sa kanya, na meron ka pang isang kinakailangan gawin. Yung mga ari-ari, ano, lahat yan, ibenta mo. At yung makukuha mong pera, ibigay mo sa mga nahihilo. Ano ang naging response ng rich young Lord, ruler? Hindi niya sinabi na, uh, Lord, gagawin ko. 
ginawa ko niya ay siya ay umalis. Nireject ko niya. Yung, yung terms ni Cristo. Ibig sabihin po, not because He can be saved by good works, kung hindi in-expose ng Panginoon kung ano talaga yung nasa heart niya. So, beneath the surface of self-righteousness, nakita ko, o pinakita ng Panginoon sa kanya, that He is not really a worshiper of God. He is worshiping other gods like His mommy. Ay hindi niya ma-surrender eh. And unless we, whatever is revealed to us, we accept them. Especially yung pong deity, yung lordship ng ating Panginoon Diyos. There is no way for a person that, uh, there is no way for a person na pwede ko siyang maligtas. Because he continues to reject the Lord and suppress the truth. For the rich young ruler, money is the glory na kung saan siya ay nabubuhay. Hindi ang Panginoon sa Kristo. So it is indeed a very, one of the, one of the saddest story that you can, you can read in the Bible, in the Gospels. Because nandiyan na eh. He was near and yet so far away from salvation. Because only that He rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. I think he wanted to get to have the best of both worlds, as they say. Pero you have to somehow remove things along the way, or to surrender things if you want to to really have the pearl of great price in your life. Sabi nga ng awiting kanina, Hallelujah, all I have is Christ. And before you can have Christ in your life, there are some things that you need to really lay down and surrender sa Panginoon Diyos. So, in this, ano, in this verse or in this section na ating pinag-aaralan, ito ho yung ikalimang ulit that Paul has stressed yung intentional rejection ng mga tao. Verses 18, 21, 23, 25, 28. Kaya sinasabi niya sa verse 28, they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer. Ibig sabihin ng fit, they did not see God as worthy. He is not worthy at all. So they had the knowledge of God, pero because they thought that Christ or God was not worthy, to be worshipped alone, they chose to reject Him. Now, in the next slide, we can see now society's retribution from God. Ang sabi ho ng Romans 1, 28, yung second part ng verse 28, God gave them over. So, pangatlong beses na ho yan, ano, we have seen that phrase in verses 24 and 26. Now we see it again for the third time here in verse 28. So pag sinabing God gave them over, this means to be given over to judgment. Nung si Christ ay inaresto ng mga Roman soldiers, sabi ng Bible, they gave Christ over to Pilate to be judged. So yung purpose ho, kung bakit si Kristo ho ay hinuli, is to be given over to judgment. Of course, alam naman natin na Christ was innocent. He was not guilty of any crime. Pero alam mo natin na yun ho yung ginawang uh, purpose ng mga uh, chief priests, ng mga scribes because of their envy and hatred towards Christ. Gumawa sila ng mga, nagpabrigate sila ng mga kasalanan against Christ. So he was given over to judgment. The same idea na ginagamit mo rito ng Panginoon. The only difference is, ang tao ho deserves yung judgment na yan. Unlike kay Christ na hindi. Kaya as Paul was continuing yung kanyang argument dito, sinasabi niya, 
yung divine retribution or vengeance awaits any society that rejects him. So yung pag-announce ng apostle sa mga words na so God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things that are not proper. Gumawa ng mga bagay na hindi ho tama. So, ito ho ay threefold repetition na. Ito ho ay sinadya ni Pablo na ulitin ang tatlong beses for emphasis. Nang sa gayon ay magkaroon din po ng, ng chilling effect sa mga nakikinig, sa mga taga, tagabasa ng kanyang sulat. Nang sa gayon ay the message will really hopefully come strongly across the hearts and mind of every reader that when people insist na ipagpatuloy yung kanilang kasalanan despite the fact na maliwanag na sinasabi ng Bible na ayon ng Diyos yun, God will give them over to judgment. Parang ganito ho, no? magbigay tayo ng halimbawa. Halimbawa, meron ho kayong kaibigan. Yung kaibigan nyo ay uh, meron siyang ano, addiction sa alcohol. So, hindi niya matigilan na maglasing araw-araw. And then, dumating yung time na lumapit sa'yo, sinabi sa'yo na pakitulungan mo ako, pag-pray mo nga na sana ma-overcome po itong aking alcoholism. Sabi mo, sige, pag-pray kita. Uh, I, I will pray for you every day. And then, ang ginagawa mo, dahil ikaw ay Christian, sinishare mo din siya ng gospel. Sinasabi mo sa kanya na the only hope that you have to be delivered dyan sa iyong addiction na yan, ay kinakailangan kilalanin mo si Kristo. Kinakailangan kilalanin mo na yung ginagawa mo ay hindi lang isang vice, kundi yan ay uh, hindi, yan ay kasaklam-saklam sa mata ng Diyos. At yan ay magpapalubog sa iyo patuloy sa mas iba pang mga kasalanan. So, siya ay nakikinig sa iyo, binibigyan mo siya ng advice, binagkipray mo siya, pero ganun pa rin. Ganun pa rin ang kanyang ginagawa. So, hindi ka nagkulang sa advice, hindi ka nagkulang sa paalala, hindi ka nagkulang sa prayer sa kanya, pero parang uh, pasok sa kabilang tenga, labas naman sa kabilang tenga, yung mga sinasabi mo sa kanya. So, until such time na sinabi mo na sa kanya na, well, ayaw mo namang magbago, ayaw mo namang makinig sa akin, ayaw mo namang isupo ang sarili mo sa Panginoon. I will continue to pray for you. Pero, siguro, kung ayaw mong makinig sa akin, baka naman nasasayang lang. I would like to also uh, spend my precious time sa ibang mga tao na gustong makinig at gustong sumunod. So we are not really telling him na you are hopeless. We are just telling him na well, kung matigas ang ulo mo at ayaw mong makinig sa dami na nang sinabi ko sa'yo at tulong ko sa'yo, you're on your own. And we are saying that dahil gusto natin na siya ay malugmok, lumubog ng gusto sa kasalanan nang sa gayon ay gamitin ng Diyos yung gano'ng sitwasyon sa kanyang buhay para siya ay to come to his senses. Parang yung nangyari sa prodigal son. Yung prodigal son na yan, I believe na even before kinuha niya prematurely yung kanyang inheritance mula sa kanyang father, siya ay ano na, siya ay headache na ng kanyang tatay. Based sa kanyang ugali. Kaya kahit na sa kanilang lo kasi kung hindi papatay yung tatay, hindi pa pwedeng talagang ibigay yung mana. Hanggat maaari. Of course, nasa discretion naman yun ng tatay. Pero we can see na doon sa discretion ng tatay, ay ayaw niyang ibigay. Pero yun nga, I'm, I'm sure, nag- nagiging cost na ng, ng tension, ng, ng away within the family, at talagang ano eh, kating-kating na yung anak na kunin yung mana niya. So, anong ginawa ng tatay? Binigay sa kanya. Tapos, sabi sa kanya, sige, bahala ka kung saan mo gustong pumunta. 
So, nung nilaspag niya yung, ano, yung kanyang mana, in very short time, nagkaroon ng famine doon sa lugar na kanyang pinuntahan, nalugmok siya sa kasalanan at pinakailangan niya ng pumasok sa isang trabaho na hindi kaaya-aya para sa mga hudyo. Ang mga hudyo ay hindi ako kumakain ng baboy. Doon mo siya nag-work sa babuyan. At kung ano yung kinakain ng baboy, yun din ang kinakain niya. Kasi may famine din. Siguro wala, wala rin pang sweldo sa kanya. Yun na lang makakainin niya. And then finally, na-realize niya na doon sa bahay ng aking ama, yung mga servants doon may maayos na patayuan at kumakain ng mabuti. Na-realize niya na unang-una, he has sinned against heaven. And secondly, he realized he has sinned against his father. So he came to his senses, tumayo siya, bumalik sa kanyang tatay, pinractice pa nga niya yung kanyang sasabihin sa kanyang tatay. Yung kanyang pinractice ay, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. Even if you don't treat me or accept me anymore as your son, just make me one of your servants. So nandun yung kanyang repentance, nandun yung kanyang, nawala na yung kanyang self-entitlement. Kahit na siya, tanggapin na lamang bilang isang alipin, okay na sa kanya. He was ready to suffer the consequences because of his sin. Yun ho yung repentance. Yun ang isang mahalagang elemento na ikaw, na ikaw ay talaga nagsisisi sa harapan ng Diyos. At nung siya ay bumalik, yung father mo niya was so gracious and loving na hindi pa nga tapos yung kanyang sinasabi, niyakap na siya at binigyan siya ng undeserving welcome party. Ano? Nagkaroon ng pagdiriwang. Tiging. Dito makikita ko natin na misa kinakailangan, ganun ang mangyari sa isang tao. Eh. Talagang Okay, talagang matigas ang ulo mo. Sige, bahala ka. And then when he lives outside of anyone's authority, ayaw niya magpa, magpa-submit sa Diyos, ayaw niya magpa-submit sa magulang, ayaw niya magpa-submit sa any authority, akala niya, yun ang masayang buhay. So yung, yung restraint ay wala na. Ginagamit ko ng Diyos yung mga ganong sitwasyon na pagka talagang sobrang lugmok na sa consequence ng kasalanan at saka ako nagkakaroon ng awakening. Ganon ang isang bagay. Part of God's judgment pero nakapaloob pa rin huron yung pag-asa and yung mercy ng Panginoon Diyos. So we can see here, brethren, na when Paul writes, God gave them over, he means that God has delivered them over to divine judgment because of their unbelief. So yung statement announces a sentence of divine condemnation in which they are now imprisoned in their own sins. At hindi na ko sila makapatakas noon. Nakalock up na sila sa kanilang kasalanan. Wala nang hope of any escape from their sin except by a divine intervention of God's mercy. Kaya ang sulat ni Paul, God gave them over to a deprived mind. So yung una ho, God gave them over to sexual immorality. Verse 24. Pangalawa, God gave them over to homosexual activity. Verse 26, 27. And finally, here in verse 28, sabi niya, God gave them over to a depraved mind. In the Greek, it is the Greek word adokimos. This means that their thinking is no longer capable of reasonable thought. Di ba, nakaka, nakakatakot ho yun, no? no longer capable of reasonable thought. You know, when I was uh, 
uh, coming across this uh, commentary, naalala ko ho yung testimony ni Asa in Psalm 73. Nung, nung siya ho ay uh, on his way to stumbling, ang sabi niya, that I was like a, a beast, a brute beast before you. Dahil, nawala ho yung reasonability ng kanyang pag-iisip ng mga panahon na siya ay nagbabackslide. Ganun ho, when, when God, brethren, or when people continue to suppress the truth, nagkakaroon ho ng depraved mind. Incapable of reasonable thought. They are unable to think rationally or logically concerning issues of life. Incapable na ho for rational thought. Insane na yung kanilang mga choices. Insane choices. Na hindi nila naman gagawin yon noon nung hindi pa nila pinipili na i-reject ang Panginoong Diyos. Ito ho ay divine justice ng Panginoon. Kaya ang tao ho would continue to, to sink deeper into their sins. Ang sabi nga ho ni uh, Steve Lawson in the next slide, commenting on this passage, sabi ni Steve Lawson, Paul writes, God gave them over to a depraved mind. This is the third time they have been given over to their sin. At first, God gave them over to sexual immorality. Then God gave them over to lesbian and homosexual activity. And finally, God gave them over to a depraved mind. This means that their thinking is no longer capable of reasonable thought. It means that they are unable to think rationally or logically concerning issues of life. Their mind is rendered incapable of rational thought. They make insane choices that they would have never made otherwise. This exercise of divine justice causes them to sink yet deeper in their sin. End of quote. And then in the next slide, this time a quotation from John MacArthur. Sabi ni John Mac, And so man is turned over to the law of his own sinfulness and its compounded consequences. And people really don't like it. They run off to the psychiatrist, the psychologist, the analyst. They run off to take a vacation to try to forget. They travel, they entertain themselves, they drink, they take drugs, they seek alleviation of the consequences of their sin, of sin every way possible. But have you noticed how utterly impossible it is? In fact, the highest suicide rate in America among any profession is that of psychiatrists who not only can't help people, but can't help themselves. You know ang malungkot niya. Kaya mabuti na lang ako sa awal ng Diyos na more na ganyan ako. Kasi doon ako yung direksyon ko eh. Kaya nga ako ako kumuha ng tortors ng psychology. Of course, we're not saying na lahat ng nasa porsong yun ay mababaliw o hindi man na ng palataya. But what we're saying is, if we think that the solution to our problem, to our sins, is to take drugs, to take counsel under the worldly wisdom of psychiatrists and psychologists, hindi ho. There can be a temporary alleviation of our miserable life. Pero surface level lang yun. It will. It is never the solution. It is only a band-aid solution sa isang sugat na nabubulok na na hindi ko kayang gamutin ng band-aid. The gospel, brethren, is the solution. In the next slide, we can see that in this judgment of God upon them, there is no way out of the inevitable consequence 
of their sinfulness. No alleviation. No freedom from bondage. There is no limiting of the pain. No easing of the guilt because they turned over to wrath. And so it is the divine act of judgment on them that they are doomed to compound their sinfulness and have to endure all of its consequences. Kaya kung hindi nila pwedeng sisihin ng Diyos, whatsoever a man sows that he shall reap also. In the next slide, we look at our next point, which is society's rottenness without God. And we find this in verses 29 to 31. Dito ho, makakakita ho tayo ng mahabang listahan ng mga vices, ng mga kasalanan. Ito ang pinakamahabang listahan okay, sa Bible na ating makikita. At itong mga kasalanan ito ay all in all ay 21. 21 sins na naka-arenso in four sections. This morally depraved culture is described as being filled with the Greek word is pleiro, okay, meaning all kinds of evil. Being filled with all kinds of evil. They are under the dominant control of this wicked ills. Hindi mo sila mga casual partakers ng evil, but they are under the power of evil, or the evil one. So, tignan na natin yung first section in the next slide. Yung section one is sinfulness. Sabi niyan, being filled with all unrighteousness. The word all means unrighteousness at every level. And the word unrighteousness in the Greek word adikia means violating a law, a departure from a standard. So any lawless behavior before Christ is unrighteous before Him. In the next slide, we see the word wickedness or pomeria. It means evil plots and purposes. This describes the scheming by evil. And completing this first section is the term evil, which means a desire to injure others. So they harm others in order to get what they want. In the next slide, we see the section 2. Yung mga sinful pursuits. So nagsisimula ho yan with the words full of in the Greek, it is mestos, meaning that their sin is full, full to the brim, overflowing na yung kanilang kasalanan. Wala nang paglalagyan. The first evil that fills the heart is envy, which means jealousy and wishing ill will. Okay? Jealousy and wishing ill will. In the next slide, the next evil is murder, which represents persons who are willing to kill in order to steal from others. And this is followed by the sin of strife, which means contention, quarreling, arguing, bickering. So, ito ho is followed by deceit. Greek word dolos, which means trickery. So, yung mga individuals that are willing to lie, sinungaling, to whoever, so that they can acquire what they want. And then the last scene in this section, second section, is malice, which speaks of the malignant hatred that is foaming up inside of them. In the next slide, we are now in section 3, yung mga sinful practices, beginning with gossips. That is, they are literally whisperers. There is perverse plotting and sinister contriving behind the scenes for evil purposes. They are also slanderers, which are those who defame others. They are haters of God. 
these who have rejected God do so because they hate Him. And then in the next slide, we continue with insolent, which describes those who are lifted up with pride. It portrays a verbal attacker heaping insults on others. The next is arrogant. This refers to those who raise themselves up above others. Okay, what else? Inventors of evil. So they concoct new forms of wickedness that earlier would have been totally unimaginable. In the next slide, we have disobedient to parents. So ito yung sin of child rebellion. No regard for authority. Remember that submission to authority must be learned first at home. Pero when obedience by children to their parents is gone, pag wala na, a society is set on a course of anarchy that knows no limits. Pag wala regard for one's parents, this moral breakdown leads to disregard for the civil and criminal law. Remember in the Old Testament, di ba? Ano ho ang uh, penalty? Pagka ho ang mga anak, limbawa, minura nila yung kanilang ano, o binastos nila. Ang penalty ho ay, o kamatayan. Ganun ho ka serious yung kasalanan na yun. So, if authority is not learned, submission to authority is not learned, at home, later on, these same people will have no respect for any institutional authority, whether in the classroom, in the workplace, and in the government. They become like lawless gang members, no walang compliance for any authority. So parang to each his own, doing what is right in their own eyes na lang ito na siya nangyari sa Judges 21 verse 25 nung namatay na ho si Joshua in the next slide we are in section 4 of this uh, category of sins and section 4 is about sinful perversions verse 31 so we can see here na sabi yan, they are without understanding asinetos in the Greek that is to say, they are without any intelligent thought concerning God or morality. So, in case, pabol na ho sila of any correct decision making. Wala na silang comprehension or understanding tungkol sa Diyos. Hindi na nila alam yung they, they could not understand the, the sense of moral law. At wala na rin ho silang common decency. They do not understand the truth of God even at the most basic level. Yung kanilang consensia are seared as with a hot iron. Yung right and wrong can no longer be distinguished by them. Sabi pa yan, they are untrustworthy which means they are covenant breakers. Wala silang prinsipyo sa kanilang mga pinapangako sa kanila mga sinasabi they think nothing ano ha, to break their marriage vows or business contract whenever it is to their own advantage sila ang mga taong walang prinsipyo gagawin lang ang lahat para ma-fulfill yung kanilang selfish desires in the next slide sabi niyan, they are also unloving astorgos in the Greek and unmerciful anilimon in the Greek the idea is that there is no compassion for those who are in need yung kanilang desire lang ay self gratification while have, having no regard for the good of others so yun ho yung mga kasalanan niyo sabi ni Robert Simmons in the next slide sin is such a severe problem that mankind cannot fix it. Men have tried to throw education, 
money, government, religion, and many other antidotes at it. Yet sin is not fixed by education. There are many depraved educated men that have brought evil on history. Sin is not fixed by money. The rich and poor alike fill prison with blood on their hands. Sin is not fixed by government. Both king and peasant have brought atrocities. Sin is not fixed by religion. In fact, religion often multiplies sin as men have justification or excuse for sin. And this is real. This is a fact, brethren. Now, people from all walks of life, from coming from all kinds of background, brethren, we have seen. We have seen enough. These things cannot fix sin. And this is the reason why Christ came. He is God's provision. Sa kasalanan. He is our only hope. Now, hindi na naka-include dyan sa uh, slide ko natin, yung last verse, which is verse 32. Society's rebellion against God. Now, if you would uh, turn with me sa Romans 1, para makita lang mo natin, verse 32. So, yun ho yung pinakal, uh, I believe, pinakal last verse sa Romans 1. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. So, what do we see here? Kino-conclude na ngayon ni Paul yung section na ito nire-reinforce niya na lahat ng magre-reject sa Diyos will be abandoned by Him. Kaya ho, sinasabi rito ni Paul, although they know God's law or God's ordinance, na lahat ng mga gumagawa ng mga bagay na yan that are worthy of death, meaning spiritual death, they not only do the same, so, hindi lang nila ginagaya, but they give hearty approval sa mga nag-practice lang. So, ibig sabihin ho, ay, even though, maaari hindi nila alam yung Bible, maaari hindi nila binabasa ang Bible, but you know what? Sinasabi nga ng Romans 2, 14 and 15, merong moral law upon their hearts. Merong conscience sa bawat tao Yung conscience na yun, bear witness within them concerning what is right and what is wrong. Para siyang isang built-in alarm na nag inform sa mga tao kung ano ang kanulid-lugod sa Diyos at kung ano ang hindi. Sinasabi sa kanila ng kanilang konsensya, if they have crossed the line that was established by God, and if they have entered into forbidden territory. Di ba noon may commercial na sa sabon niya tayo? Sa grocery siya? May konsensya. Ako ang iyong konsensya. Piliin niya kung ano yung sabon na bibili. Buti sana ba ang problema lang natin eh? Ano bang magandang sabon at hindi magandang sabon na pwedeng pili? Pero yung kasalanan niya. Kaya even even though nung time ni Noah ay wala pang Ten Commandments, Di ba? Wala pang Ten Commandments eh. Kasi it only came during Moses' time. Exodus 20. Pero why did God destroy the whole earth? Kasi alam ng Diyos that they were continually rejectors of God and their heart was continually inclined to evil. Their thoughts and mind. Bakit? Bakit sila hindi Acquitted. Why are all men guilty nung time ni Noah? Kasi may konsensya. 
Kasi may, may general revelation ng Diyos ang kanyang kalikasan. But they suppress the truth, brethren. Hindi sila nakinig. There's a built-in alarm. And by the way, God gave them 100 years of Noah's preaching ministry. But they all mocked Noah and his message. They know the law of God in their conscience. But they could not be restrained from committing evil. Their evil were unchecked, unbridled. At sabi ng Romans 1.32, that they practice such things as a sinful lifestyle. Hindi nila ginawa yun dahil nagkamali lang sila uh, accidentally. Lifestyle na yun. At ang sabi rito, they are worthy of death. And this death is the second death, which is eternal death in hell. At sabi rin, not only do they commit such sins, but they give hearty approval to those who practice them. Yun ang pinaka-lowest point dito. Eh. They give hearty approval to those who practice them. Society, brethren, applauds yung mga buhay na deviant. Yung mga buhay na sumasalangsang sa sa batas ng Diyos. Itong mga shameful acts na ito are no longer hidden in darkness. They are being done in broad daylight, brethren. Wala na sa closet eh. Nasa labas na. At they are strutting down themselves across the streets para makita ho ng lahat. Those who are doing this are already so proud, they are so defiant in their evil ways. Flagrant immorality. We can see them, brethren, hugging the television programs. Sino yung matataas ang rating? Mga reality shows na kung saan there is immorality and yung mga wala ka makukuhang mag-pick up na hina-highlight ng mga gandang mga values. Wickedness, brethren, is just normal and it's become a good business. It sells more copy and it expands viewing audience. You know why? Because those who are, yung mga tao who nakamatangkilik rito, are corrupt people themselves. That's the harsh reality. The depravity of society. Birds of the same feathers flock together. This is the downward trajectory on which we find the world in our present hour. Our decaying societies are on the slippery slope, descending into the flames of hell. And even our own nation is nearing the bottom of immorality. But there is only one hope to pull out of this death spiral. Ito ho yung sinasabi ni Pablo na kanyang pinapahayag sa Romans 1.16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God and the salvation to those who believe. Kaya ho, we cannot change the culture of our society. So, alam mo, ano man ang kultura dito sa Calabarzon o dito sa Laguna, kahit na magmarcha ho tayo dyan araw-araw, may mga placard tayo na may mga verses sa Bible. Kahit na meron tayong uh, mga placards ng Romans chapter 1 at tayo ay nagmamarcha dyan. We cannot change the culture by even petitioning halimbawa yung mga LGUs na to stop yung mga halimbawa sa Ilocos uh, doon sa city sa isang city roon o hindi lang sa isang city, kundi sa maraming mga bayan doon. Every year or twice a year, meron silang uh, beauty budget para sa mga gay. Sino supportahan yun ng local government? I mean, what do you do? 
do you insist or do you demand sa local government na to stop yung mga ginagawa niya? Kaya pa, paano kung yung mismong mayor, bading? Hmm, magagawa mo yun. At yung mga organizer, ganun din. Na malakas ang kapit. We are not here to change the culture. We are here to preach the gospel unashamedly and God will do the work not to totally overhaul society but to transform the hearts within those who will believe the gospel for salvation. Our culture, brethren, as the Bible prophesies, will proceed from bad to worse. Wala ho tayong gagawa dyan. But those who have been chosen and those who will be redeemed by the Lord, sila ho, will be pulled out of this uh, shackle of sins, brethren, and they will be the one who will glorify, worship, and serve the Lord. We cannot hope to change, brethren, yung paligid ho natin by simply, what, voting for certain candidates into office? Of course, syempre, ano mo natin yan, no? responsibility natin na bumoto to go out and cast our votes every election time. But let us not think na sila ang pag-asa ng sanlibutan. Yes, we should do all we can to influence yung mga civil processes towards common decency. We can pray na yung mga legislation na gagawin ay maging sangayon sa kalooban ng Diyos. But we can never change the deceitful hearts of people. Only the power of God unleashed through the working of the gospel can explode in lives and reverse yung downward course ng sinfulness of our society. Without the gospel, society continues to self-destruct, brethren. And therefore, we must be sobered by this divine abandonment. As I conclude this message, we must have the realization kung anong nangyayari ho sa ating paligid ngayon. We must have a Christian worldview and see na yung mga nangyayari sa ating paligid ngayon, hindi kinakailangan titignan sila according to the point of view of media, but according to the mind of Christ. Because we cannot do everything for the world. But what we can do, we must do. And what is that? We must spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you spreading the gospel to your family na hindi pa Christian? Are you spreading the gospel sa workplace mo na marami parang hindi Christian? We spread the gospel not only in our church, in our Bible studies, but also in our personal witnessing. We must work through every means possible. We must get the word of God out sa mga tao however we can and whenever we can. Ito hong task of world evangelization might be very uh, something that might be very ano po, parang impossible to do. Pero ang mahalaga lang naman ay even before you think of becoming a missionary to the overseas uh, areas, tignan mo muna yung katabi mo. Yung kasama mo sa bahay. Baka hindi mo pa na-share ng gospel. Yung kapitbahay mo, baka hindi mo pa na-share. It begins with your own Jerusalem. Before you go to the outermost parts of the world. Kaya nga ang sabi ng Panginoon sa mga disipulo, hindi niya sinabi, And you shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, you shall have power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, hindi niya sinabi, to the outermost parts of the world, to Samaria, Judea, and Jerusalem. Hindi ho. Ang sabi niya, to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, and to the outermost parts of the world. Sa so, pinaka-immediate, pinaka-malapit, moving forward sa pinaka-malayo. We cannot just sit back passively while people around us are perishing. 
Hawak-hawak po natin ang sikreto, ang ebanghelyo ng Panginoon. So when we look at our society, let us not celebrate na ang ating society ay advanced in technology, in communication. May mga gamit po yung mga yan, and we are thankful for that. But isn't it much correct that as a believer, what we must do is when we look at our society, we must mourn. Sabi ng Panginoon, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Mourn about what? Mourn about sin. Mourn about, brethren, the hopelessness of society apart from Christ. Na marami hong mga tao, when they die, kawawa ko sila. Iyakan ho natin sila sa ating mga panalangin. Let us stand between the gap, between them and God, and God, and pray that they will be given the opportunity to hear the gospel and that they would not reject the offer of Christ, but rather they would humbly come to the cross in repentance. Tayo ho'y manalangin. Father in heaven, we praise you and we worship you. We thank you, Lord God, that ang inyong salita ay wala hong itinatago sa amin. That your scripture is as honest as can it possibly be. And Lord, for many people, ito ho ay masakit. Hindi ka tanggap-tanggap. Pilit na iniaalis sa isipan o'y binabaon sa kanilang dingon. Ngunit alam namin na kahit na ito ay aming ibaon sa aming mga isip, it doesn't take away the fact that judgment will come. That people who are constant rejectors of your grace will be given over to judgment. Will be given over 